Hey beautiful Virgo family, welcome to your tarot reading for October 2024. We're going to do a general life path reading with the star tarot. Then we're going to get clarifiers with the wild reflections tarot and then we'll pull a card from the keepers of the light oracle deck to see what your gods, guides, and guards have to say. And we'll get some runes for the All Father. For those who are new here, hello, I am Teresa and welcome to my cozy corner of the internet. Here I use tarot and intuition to serve and support you on your journey to your highest and most blessed timeline. I also do this by making mala beads, also known as prayer beads or meditation beads. You can check them out at malaology.com. Now back to your reading. All right, so the energy that Virgo is wearing this month, Spirit, what is Virgo reflecting back? Four of Pentacles. So what is Virgo's path, October 2024? What does Virgo's path look like? Thank you, Spirit. One more. Thank you. All right. So you start with the moon. That's good. That's very nice. The wheel of fortune. The ten of wands. And the seven of wands. And how does uh, Virgo's path end? What does this path lead to? Thank you, Spirit. What does this path lead to? Thank you. The Hierophant, the Six of Swords, and the Seven of Cups. Beautiful. All right, so the energy you're wearing this month is Four of Pentacles. It feels like maybe you've, you've had enough of change. <laughs> like you're feeling like maybe withdrawing into your safe space. Four of Pentacles is a secure, stable environment. You know, it's staying inside. It's staying at home. Um, it's, it's, it's wanting to, wanting to, um, stabilize, you know, it's, it's wanting to recover for, for some of you from a lot of changes or a lot of energy. And I'm not surprised. We just came out of the eclipse window, ended October 2nd. Um, so depending on, on when you're watching this video, you may or may not still be in that energy of, of that extreme shift, you know, that extreme portal that, that we went through through. So, and I say we because I'm a Virgo too. <laughs> so here we are. Um, but I feel this sense of withdrawing and um, just finding your footing again, finding a way to increase stability in your life, predictability, and come up with systems and ways to integrate the changes that took place, you know, but ultimately I feel like you're in a better place materially. I feel like you are on the mend materially for some of you. There's some type of healing involved or things are, are looking up for you materially as far as your income or something like that goes as well. Okay, well, let's move it over. All right, and so your path starts with the moon. This is just a strong sense of intuition, a strong knowing on, of the direction that you want to go in, but it's also kind of a scary journey that you have to make. You know, do something that maybe scares you a little bit because with the moon card, you're coming out of this place of void, like blank slate type of energy, going into the dark forest. And this path goes from immer um um, emerging from the depths, right? So something from the depths have ha has come up, maybe something that you've woken up to, a mission or a goal that you've recently realized, right? Um, it's taking you into the dark forest, this meandering path where you're going to face your fears on some level, and then you're going to ascend up this golden pyramid to heights that you've never reached before, right? So it's kind of a scary start though to this journey. And another thing I'm seeing obviously is the moon, the, the, the moon phases, right? There's a strong sense of intuition, a strong sense of instinct as well, because you have the wolf here or a wild dog howling at the moon and the domesticated dog can't help but howl along with him. Whenever our, our, our domesticated selves, our civilized selves are exposed to our wildness, our, our deep, deep truths, right? Our, our innermost knowing, the thing that we can feel in the bones, we can't help but open up our throat chakra in a sense and express ourselves, our wild side, you know, just uh, bark at the moon. This is barking at the moon. Um, for, for some of you, you're going to be saying your words loud and proud, 
you know. For others, you're just going to be showing your um, your authentic truth, your, your, your true true, right? So there you go. And then this leads to the Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune is more change, more change on the way. But this is really, really good. This is coming from a, from coming from a place of elevation, of stillness, of having ascended already. So when the wheel can sense your high vibration, when it can sense that you're on a positive trajectory, it brings you more positive, awesome things into your life. Yeah. And, and so timing is divine. So it feels like just you're facing one shift after another and the universe knows, okay, it's shifting time. Well, the shifting isn't done. You know, Vir Virgo has more shifts to do, and this is really, really good for you, beautiful Virgo. So the Wheel of Fortune will change multiple areas of, of your life. It's not just, say, a relationship change or a work or career change or a change in how the world perceives you, a change in how you put yourself out into the world or a home and family change. It's, it's, it's multiple areas of our life. It doesn't have to be those areas specifically, but there are multiple areas of your life that are shifting. Like one change has taken place and many other things in your life have to shift in order to make room for it, make way for it, right? And we're going to pull clarifiers for each of these cards, so we will get more specifics. But I'm also finding Ten of Wands, this shift, the shift that you're undergoing, and this authenticity, this deeper dive into who you truly are and this fear that you're facing, is going to help you to put down your cross. Right now you're carrying your cross and it's burdensome, it's been heavy. It's, it's, it's been a long, long labor. I want to say labor of love, but I can't because some of you may not feel that way about whatever it is that you've been doing, whatever burden that you've been carrying. But this has, um, this has an energy of your harvest coming to an end. You know, some crop that you grew that you had to care for and tend to for a long time, you are, are harvesting it. And you'll be able to carry it to its place of rest and put down your cross for a minute before it's time to plant your new crop, to de even decide what your new crop is going to be. So this is definitely a feeling of, of ease and release, right? So you're releasing something. And I'm seeing two wheels here, right? He's He's got a wheel here too, right? So I feel like that wheel of fortune has something to do with this. It has whatever shift takes place, this is also affecting whatever burden that you've been bearing. This is going to change and shift and lighten up so much. Like you're going to feel so much lighter. And then the seven of wands, you're so passionate about something. You're going to be so passionate about something. You're going to know this is conviction on a very, very high level. And this is not being able to knock off, off not being able to be knocked off your perch. You know, you are strong here. You are firmly planted, right? Just the way his, his body is here, you'd be hard pressed to push him over. You're going to find your purpose or what it is that you, if, if you don't already know what this is, right? Um, if you do already know what it is, you're going to get behind it. You're going to stand for it, right? You're going to, um, to, uh, support it on another level, help to bring it into expression into the world because the lion is roaring, roaring. Okay, oh, yeah. so um, you are uh, feeling your purpose. I'm not going to say finding your purpose. We'll say feeling your purpose, right? And standing for it. You're going to stand up for what it is that you really believe in on some on, on some level. You're going to say your words. You're going to let people know how you feel. And um, this is going to, it's, 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 it's more of that freeing energy. You know, you're strong here. And even though this looks like a heavy energy, the Ten of Wands, Seven of Wands, this is freeing. It's going to ease you up. You're not going to have to hide how you feel about something in some way. Or you're going to um, be happier because you're going to be expressing your true authentic self. This has more of that energy of expressing your truth. Right. And then where this leads you ultimately, what this path uh, materializes for you, the Hierophant. The Hierophant is a teacher, is a guide. Um, in, in, in many senses, he is a healer. He is a bridge to heaven and to the next, to the, I, I was going to say to the next life. 
All right, so that's not really the meaning of the Hierophant, but for some of you, you know, take it as, as, as it resonates. Um, but the Hierophant gives you, gives you messages from beyond. He gives you messages from your God's guides and guards. His crown chakra is wide open. He's receiving messages and he's transmitting those messages for us, right? This is going to be, in many ways, you. You're going to be receiving messages and transmitting them. And some of you are just going to be receiving those messages. The Hierophant is a teacher. You may be learning. You may be learning a lot. These are ultimately very spiritual lessons, though. So, you know, if you're not teaching something spiritually, you'll be learning something spiritually. And the lesson of the Hierophant is follow your heart. You know, he's 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 showing how to navigate this this labyrinth to get to the pentacle, which is um, a materialization of what it is that spirit and you are co-creating. And the way to do that, he's pointing at that heart, right? So your heart knows the way to materializing what it is that you are working on, what it is that you are dreaming of, you know, and there are many other ways, but the only, the only way to the center is to follow your heart. So take that as one of the chief messages of this reading. Now, Six of Swords is vibrating with what it is that you really want and where it is that you really want to be. So he doesn't have a pull to moor himself across to this island here. He, he doesn't have an oar and he's not even worried about it. He's laying peacefully in this boat and imagining the life that he wants, imagining the land that he wants to go to and expecting for it to be there for him when he hits land, right? And in that imagining, in putting that out into the universe, into the ether, these whales are picking up that message and this is how the universe is co-creating with, with you, right? These whales are taking that message as their marching orders and they're swimming over to this land where the water is stiller. You know, it might be hard to see here, but the water is a little upset here and the water is stiller over there. So through vibrating with a more peaceful, more harmonious space in your life, something that you can resonate with, uh, with more ease, the, the whales are taking that message and going there and creating a wake in there um, behind them and it's carrying the boat. So you're not doing this, the universe is doing this for you, right? All you're doing is letting the universe know what it is that you want. So there's a strong sense of co-creation with the universe in this reading. And there are so many opportunities and possibilities for you that come um, as a result of this path, as a result of what actions you take in October. The Seven of Cups is many, many options. And in some cases, for some of you be beautiful Virgos, it's too many options, right? But the truth is, are there ever too many options? You just have to make a choice, right? So that's not a problem, right? There is no problem here. What you have is... Um, so many things that you can pursue, so many ways that you want to go. And I'm going to get clarifiers and I'm interested to see what clarifies this. Because oftentimes I would say, choose one, you know, focus, connect with yourself, follow your emotional guidance system, whatever, right? Depending on what the other cards say. But in this case, I can't say that. I don't know what this Seven of Cups is saying. It feels to me like these multiple opportunities are all good, and maybe all of these things, multiple things, like you'll, you'll be showered with blessings, you know, I'm feeling open to that possibility right now. All right, so let's clarify Virgo's reading. What does the Virgo family look like? What is Virgo family reflecting to spirit, the cosmos in October? Thank you, spirit. Okay, so four of pentacles is clarified with two of cups. Beautiful, harmonious energy. All right, now, please clarify Virgo's path. Please clarify Virgo's path for October 2024. Thank you, Spirit. One more. Okay, thank you. So the moon is clarified by temperance. The wheel of fortune is clarified by the world. Wow. Wow. Potent shift. Potent change. Some things are going to change um, irre irrevocably, 
irrevo irrevocably. <laughs> the Ten of Wands clarified by Seven of Swords. Seven of Wands clarified by Ace of Swords. All right, now what does this path lead to, Spirit? Show us where this ends. Where, where does this end for beautiful Virgo in October? Thank you. The Hierophant is clarified by Page of Pentacles. Six of Swords by Three of Wands. And the Seven of Cups by Four of Wands. Wow. I love it. I love it. All right. So this energy of just withdrawal, kind of restructuring, reorganizing, creating systems, creating systems to support a new structure that you've brought into your life. You have two of cups. So it looks like you're partnering with somebody or, or you're partnering with spirit on, on a new level. There seems to be support here for you, external support, you know, and this can be in the material world or it can be outside of the material world. And um, this is a, a card of support, right? So partnerships um, and cooperation and loved ones, friends and family are all supporting you and helping you um, to, uh, I just keep wanting to say readjust. You know, this is a period of readjustment, right? So that's nice. And then the moon is clarified by temperance. So I love this. So, so, so the moon is a dark card, right? But there's a lot of light in this card. There's, there's the full moon, which illuminates the darkness. There's this gold temple, which is your ascension out af after the path that goes through the dark forest, you know, and then there's the white dog with the black dog, right? And then here you have um, accepting your dark side with your light side and balancing your water with your fire, an energy of elk alchemy, alchemizing yourself, alchemizing your parts, allowing your different parts to um, temper one another, right? And these are two different parts of you. The dark, the, the dark dog is, is part of you. The domesticated dog is part of you, right? There's a wild side of you and a domesticated side of you. And here you, you see them together, um, creating something new, creating something angelic, creating something powerful. The temperance is powerful, right? And magical. As you um, navigate the energies of fire and water and, and um, allow them to blend together, you become tempered so much stronger, so much more resilient, so much more powerful. And, and, that, and that's what temperance is. It's taking a, a sword, for instance, right? And making it so hot in a fire and then putting it in water. And, and, and the water helps to cool the sword super quickly so that if you do this over and over again, it becomes harder and harder and harder, hardened steel. That's what temperance is, right? And that's what happens to us when we go through the dark forest, when we go through these thundery dark times, right? And, and the light times just help to restore and refresh us until the dark times come again, right? So you're in the midst of a process of self-alchemizing, self um, transmutation, healing, healing on some level. Things that are like old, old ancient wounds, old DNA level trauma, ancestral trauma, right? Because this water here, this, this crustacean is, is, is in some ways meant to symbolize the earliest forms of life on earth that we, we remember, we ourselves remember, um, everything that has, that, that has happened throughout our bloodline, which goes way, way past humanity. Right. So, so you are alchemizing. I mean, this is deep. <laughs> this is deep, but this is just what I'm getting. You're truly, truly working on something um, beyond words, you know, beyond understanding. You're healing yourself on another level, basically. Take it as it resonates. And then the wheel of fortune is clarified by the world. Well, the world is the higher octave of the wheel of fortune. It is the ultimate conclusion, the ultimate um, um, 
culmination of your journey, right? So a journey is ending. A big, big chapter of your life is ending in October and a brand new one is starting. The wheel has a whole whole new start on the other side and the world has a whole new start. The world ends with, you know, ultimately it ends with the fool's journey that starts all, all over again. And so you, beautiful Virgo, are completing something and starting something new. And this, again, could be many, many things, right? This just could be a way of looking at life, a way of dealing with things. If it is a way of dealing with things and a way of approaching things, well, that's going to affect many things in your life, many aspects of your life, right? But I get this. This is an unusual world card. And I have to say, it's interesting that I chose this deck for this, for, for, for this month's reading because this world card, she's extremely restful you know, and I'm feeling that with you, like, like, like there's an energy of ease and peace because of this four of pentacles, you know, this is working behind the scenes, um, moving things, um, moving pieces of a puzzle rather than carrying bricks to build a wall, right, but it's very, very promising with this new beginning, and the Ten of Wands is clarified by the Seven of Swords. The Seven of Swords is self-deception. Ultimately, it's self-deception. Now, there could be other um, people who are deceiving you or other things and situations that, that, that may be deceiving you at this time. But ultimately, it's self-deception because only we can deceive ourselves, right? We can choose to believe something. We have intuition. We have very strong in intuition. All human beings do. We all know um, what's real and what's not real. And sometimes we don't want to see the truth, right? Um, there is none so blind as he who will not see, right? So the seven of swords is check your premises, check your understanding. There's something about this ending, this 10 of wands that's interesting right next to the world and the wheel of fortune, major, major ending. And this 10 of wands, I'll tell you, is usually an ending to something that you are working on because wands are labor, wands, wands are fire, wands are what you put your body behind. So um, for, for some of you, it's the end of a job, the end of a career, the end of something that you were putting your hands to and making, you know, materially in some way, right? And the Seven of Swords is some level of I'm, I'm going to call it a mental challenge because swords or I'm sorry, sevens are challenges and swords are your mental body, right? So, or your intellectual body. So there is a need to mm, tap in, tune in and turn on. There's a need to connect with spirit, a need to open your eyes to the truth in, in some way, right? And here he has his third eye open. You know, there is that energy of third eye here in the, in, in the Hierophant, he's got his crown chakra open and he also has a very activated third eye, right? Um, you have the ability to see through these things. So check in with yourself, all right? So that you understand what is really happening here with the Ten of Wands. Take it as it resonates. I am not certain what, what that could mean. It's going to be different for everybody. Um, but um, one more message about the Seven of Swords is for a lot of you, this is an energy of imposter syndrome not feeling like you're enough when you are more than enough in some way, uh, feeling like um, you are less than others or, or unworthy of something when you are more than worthy of whatever this, this, this may be too. So there you go. And then the seven of wands is clarified by the ace of swords. This knowing is just clearly um, a, an inspiration, a download, uh, such a strong intuitive hit that it catapults you into your next chapter. So this is clarification, clarity, wisdom messages from the universe, right? So this is, you know what, it feels like this 10 of wands for some of you, it's like losing a job um, that you maybe were lying to yourself about, or you were lied about in some way, right? Um, that caused the, the loss of a job, which was destined. Trust me, everything that's happening this month is very, very destined because you have the wheel of uh, fortune and the world that opens your eyes, ace of swords, to something that you're very, very passionate about, or that you um, that moves you very, very deeply. Seven of Wands is is really deeply moved toward a purpose toward a cause, right? 
But this is wonderful. An ace of it, any ace is a very, very exciting and positive new, new beginning for you. And this is a new beginning that is going to uh, affect the way you see things, the way you think about things, because swords, again, is your mind. So, you know, this is um, a new belief system, uh, whether it's about yourself or something else, you know, it's a new way of communicating because swords has a lot to do with words. Uh, it's, you know, it's, um, if, if, if you just take the S away from the beginning and you do have words, right. And words are spells, right. So, so this is, this is part of your power, part of your magic. Okay. And then where this path leads with this, all culminates to for you. Beautiful Virgo family is guidance clarified the hierophant clarified by page of pentacles a beautiful new beginning a new um a new chapter um in the area of material manifestation so this could be a new job right losing an old job or leaving an old job and being guided to follow your heart and find a job that really really makes you happy yeah i mean practically speaking for a lot of you that's what we're talking about now this is going to this is going to translate very, very differently for each of you, but you can see just practically speaking how that could play out. This is an exciting new beginning. Pages are like aces. It's an exciting new beginning that's going to lead to material satisfaction. That's going to lead to an increase in some way that makes you happy. Like the page of Pentacles is happy. You know, he's embodying something that is um, easy, peaceful, and resonant with who he truly is. So this is, a, you know, a beautiful shift for you, Virgo. All right. And then you have six of swords clarified by the three of wands. And look, there, it's, it's, it's two rivers. You can even see the, the, the sunlight or the moonlight reflected on both of these bodies of, of water. All right. So this is um, following your emotional guidance system. Light on water is your emotional guidance system. It's the thing that guides you, right? Light guides us and water is, is, is our emotion. And here, this energy of the three of wands is so similar to this energy of the four of pentacles. It's being in a safe place, closed away for a time, um, at peace, at ease, um, secure and stable, right? This is a real stable energy of preparation, He's got his camera and he's getting ready to strike strike out for the day and enjoy some sightseeing or whatever it is that he has planned. But first he's enjoying coffee. He maybe has a companion that, that that's their coffee cup there. He's got his candle, his his light of wisdom, guidance, like the hermit's lamp, right? And he's just uh, planning what he's going to do for the day. So this is you preparing for the future, right? And clarifying the Six of Swords, it's looking into what you want to resonate with. You know, it's deciding what it is that you want to vibe with so that the universe can bring you there. You know, this is you conferring with the universe. You can see that this cup on the table, the chair is pushed in. There's nobody sitting across from him, but there's a cup there. You know, this is you co-creating with the universe. Clear as a bell, right? So that the whales can swim to the peaceful land and take you there and you don't have to do so much work. So much Ten of Wands. Okay. So strong energy of co-creating with the universe. Beautiful Virgo. And then the Seven of Cups. Many possibilities. Look, is clarified by the Four of Wands. It all makes you happy. Four of Wands is a victory lap. It's a finish line. And it's, again, a very, very secure and safe place. All the fours have a lot of stability, right? And it's kind of a portal in and of itself. Because a two of wands is a portal. Four, four of wands creates a passageway into your future. But it's also um, a time to embrace what it is that you've accomplished, recognize how far you've come, and appreciate yourself. Appreciate life. Smell the roses and enjoy yourself for a minute, right? So with the Seven of Cups, I notice the top of it is the Three of Cups, and the Three of Cups is an energy of celebration. In a traditional Rider Waite Smith deck, the Three of Cups is three women with their cups lifted, dancing and celebrating, just like this, with their long dresses. There is a celebration. This, this could be a wedding. This is oftentimes a wedding, or a birth, or just a birthday, you know, 
course, Virgo, I know that if Virgo is your sun sign, it's not your birthday. Maybe it's someone else's, but it's, and, and this has more, this is, feels more consequential than just a holiday. This feels like, um, you finding your, um, it's, it's, it's like that movie. There's an old movie, how Stella got her groove back. <laughs> You know, you finding your happy self, you finding your happy place, you finding your happiness, really, you know, and that's part of this seven of cups energy. This is something the universe is offering you. It's saying, you know what? Accept it. Accept the gift of these cups. Accept multiple cups. You know, I just feel like there are multiple cups on offer for you and you you don't need to settle for for one or two or three, you know. And there's plenty to go around. It's just a really, really, really beautiful energy for you in October. Beautiful Virgo. I'm excited about that. All right. So, Keepers of the Light, please let Virgo know what you want to share with them. Oh, okay. Just one second here. For October 2024. Oh, I love this because we're about to pull runes for Odin and Odin comes out. So psychic insight, your third eye is open. See truth for what it is. Follow your intuition. I love it. Follow your intuition. I really feel that for you, Virgo. You just need to step back, go within, relax. You know, there's, there's no reason to panic here. There's no reason to rush around or worry too much. You know, this is an energy of you're just figuring it out, right? And your third eye is open. We talked about that third eye energy here and here, you know. So you're being told, um, allow yourself to see the truth. Don't let anybody else tell you what truth is this month. Um, check in with yourself, all right? And you will find what you need, all right? Thank you all, Father Odin. Thank you so much. Now, what runes do we have for Virgo for October? Let's see. We're going to take three. Two, three. Thank you. Okay. All right. So you have a bind rune. This bind rune is for protection and blessings. So that's really good. You are protected and you are blessed. There, there are a lot of runes in the binder, and they're all very, very positive. And what it's saying is whatever is starting now, whatever you initiate now, what, what, it, it doesn't even have to be an initiation, but I'm seeing that for a lot of you with the Page of Pentacles and Ace, Ace of Swords and the Wheel in the World. <laughs> like, oh my goodness. Like maybe you started it in September. May, may, maybe you started it in August. Maybe you'll be starting it in November and you're in the planning stage. Whatever it is, right? Where Whatever direction you're going into, this is preordained. This is destined. This is blessed. This is going to um, bless you. And you really don't have anything to worry about at all. Not that you are worried about something, but you know, this is just a strong rune of reassurance. Oftentimes I've left this rune on my altar um, just so that I can have that in my line of sight throughout the day, because my altar is next to, to, to my desk, um, to to allow me to absorb that feeling of being blessed, like it's a strong, strong rune of blessings. All right. And then you have algas. This is protection, shielding, help. And it's also like a conductor, right? It conducts energy. It's 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 like a fork, a metal fork that, you know, um, is, is, is at the top of a roof and lightning hits it, you know, so, so it absorbs the energy from the universe. It absorbs blessings from the universe. It's an open crown chakra, right? So there's a lot to that one as well. And all good, like super, super good. And gosh, darn it. I am so glad I'm a Virgo. <laughs> then we have Wunyo. Wunyo. This is blessings, success, and fertility. So whatever you're growing, whatever you're gestating, whatever you're starting will be very fertile, be very blessed, and will manifest greatly. So you have a really, really exciting month, beautiful Virgo. Um, I also am doing weekly readings, so keep, keep checking in. Thank you so much for being here, and I'll see you next time. Peace.